In today's journey, we take some time to chill out and make hot sauce. Unfortunately for Phil, he lives in the land of the whitefish, meaning all the food has no flavor. But luckily, making hot sauce is as simple as grabbing some of your favorite hot peppers, some tomatoes, and maybe a few other ingredients, and basically blend the crap out of them until they make a sauce. Uh, also, you might want to cut up the stuff beforehand to make it a little easier. But that's basically it. Although you probably would want to add some vinegar and maybe ferment it for a little bit if you want to get the most out of your sauces. It really is that easy though. The hardest part was tracking down all of these ingredients in the middle of winter. But so long as you can get your hands on some tomatoes, even if they're from a can, some onion, at least a few cloves of garlic, a bit of cilantro, and whatever hot peppers you can get your hands on. For this batch, we will mostly be using the kit that Phil's mom got him for Christmas a few years back. Better late than never. And they actually sell an improved version of this kit, affiliate link down in the description. Although the more discerning of the pepper aficionados may scoff at the selection in here, it has all the basics that a novice will need to get into the business. Starting with, this kit actually comes with six bottles. I'm guessing the burlap is just there for shipping material. The caps with the built-in dripper are definitely a nice touch that makes serving in the end a lot easier. Especially if you make the hot stuff like Phil does. And of course there are directions that we're kind of following, but not really, because we're rebels like that. And because we're preparing food that we hope to store for longer than a month, it is important to make sure everything's sanitized, which is why they give you some easy clean. Although we'll be using star sand that we have in house. Partly because we don't like how the bag puffed up, but mostly because we like using a squirt bottle, so we can squirt things. It makes our life easy. And unless you're a super tough guy, use the gloves. When you handle hot peppers, you get the oils on your hands. If you touch things with your hands, such as your eyes or other sensitive places, they will burn like they ate peppers. We have warned you and you do so at your own risk. Speaking of hot peppers, this kit comes with a variety. The names are on screen so you can't make fun of how we pronounce them. And to back up the hot peppers, we have some ground spices as well. Some of them are just more ground up hot peppers, but there are also a couple of ground spices in here to help give some complexity to your sauces. And unfortunately, one of our packs was not sealed properly and is leaking. No matter, we will press on for science. Our pouch included some New Mexico chili powder, ancho pepper, cayenne pepper, curry powder, and brown sugar. All in all, we're pretty happy with this blend of peppers. There could be some hotter ones, but hey, we can always add that later with some pure capsaicin if we really want it. But the true unsung hero of any hot sauce is the vinegar. This kit comes with white distilled and cider vinegar. And last but not least, the most useless part of this kit, the labels. They give you three labels to go with six bottles. Whatever. Cut them down, I guess. What I do know is that making hot sauce is actually a lot like making beer. Not only do you have total control by changing up some basic ingredients, it's also a perishable food item that requires proper sanitization during the making process. Otherwise, you run the risk of premature spoilization. So unless you plan on eating all of the sauce that you make at once, sanitize everything that will come into contact with the hot sauce before and after the making process. During this kit, we will actually be boiling it as well because we will not be naturally fermenting this one. That's because we will be using mostly dried peppers, which lack the lactose bacillus needed to ferment. But give us a moment to prep up everything, and we'll save you from Phil's terrible knifing skills. But once you have all your mise en plod, meaning everything's cut and measured ready to go, we finally move on to the part where we actually make the hot sauce. This isn't actually a cooking show, so the only thing we're going to show you how to actually prepare is the peppers themselves. Luckily, we were able to find a fresh habanero at the supermarket. Remember, normally the smaller the pepper, the hotter they are. And the only thing we really want to do is chop that stem off. Although if you didn't mind a milder sauce with a bit fruitier of a flavor, you could cut out all the seeds and other junk inside. And even though we're going to put it in the blender anyways, you do still want to give everything a rough chop, just to give it a bit easier of a job to move it around the blades. We will be following the kids' Caribbean sauce, so the guajillo chili will be the main pepper. Again, we'll want to break these up to make the job a little easier down there. And also, we should have put the dried peppers in first, ground those up, then put a wet pepper in. Would have made our life a bit easier. And to make it a bit more complex, we'll also be throwing in a de arbo pepper and a chipotle pepper. The former will bring in a bit of heat, but the latter will bring in a nice smokiness that's going to really complex everything up. 
And because we want this to be a hot sauce, a really hot sauce, we're gonna wanna add all the seeds we can. If this is your first time cutting up a dried chipotle pepper though, remember that it's gonna be pretty leathery. So you want a nice stable cutting platform, unlike what Phil's doing. Always a picture of safety. But once you have everything in, we can start cranking it on the blender. You don't want to throw everything into the blender at once and just run and gun it because you want to make sure everything gets thoroughly mixed in without having any lumps. For example, had we separated out this fresh pepper, we wouldn't be having these problems right now with the blade not being able to grab it because everything is kind of wet and not wet at the same time. To remedy this, we put in some hot boiling water that we were going to add anyways. We're also gonna let this steep for about two to five minutes afterwards to make sure that the dried peppers get good and rehydrated so that they mix properly with the future ingredients. We will also be using some time distortion for your convenience. Another thing to look out for, as some of the capsaicin in the process will get into the air and make some almost deadly gases for you to inhale. Lean away when you open the blender. The last thing that we'll add before we let this rest though will be the spices. Because these are also dried, it is a good idea to let it rehydrate in the water for a bit first before mixing it with the rest of the ingredients. Now that everything's gotten to know each other in a wet and wild way, we've also grabbed the salt that we forgot to get earlier. A little goes a long way. This is also no time to forget to be sanitary even though we're not going to ferment this. It helps create a shelf stable product. And don't forget to give it a taste throughout the process to see if there's any tweaks you want to make along the way. Just remember to note them down. The recipe we used is down in the description. And every time you hear that, that's Phil cleaning off the spoon in some sanitizer. We want this to be a real tropical and acidic food sauce that Phil can put on anything. That's why we're putting in an equal amounts of mango and pineapple. And remember, there's no shame to using canned fruit in this case. Please remember that at the time of filming, it's the middle of winter in Michigan. Fresh pineapple is hard to come by, and if you find it, you don't want it. And sticking with tradition, remember to blend every time you add an ingredient. Unless you have an industrial blender or food processor, it's gonna make your life easier. If you do put in too much at once, you do run the risk of overworking your blender and it could damage it. And even if you're not a big fan of onion, you will want to add about a half a cup in just because it works as a bit of a natural preservative. Although you could go down to as little as a quarter of a cup. And again, don't forget to give it a taste before you add each ingredient so you can see if you can do it better next time. Speaking of which, this is when the sauce was the best for mm. us at this point. So next time we will either use less onion or just expect less shelf life. And again, just because we've blended in the onion, we want to give it another taste and it's still good. It's just not as great. We'll probably tone back the onion and put in a bit more pineapple and mango in next time. It's good. It's just a bit muddled. But because this is just like beer and will change flavor a bit over time as it ages, we're going to follow through the rest of the recipe and see how it turns out. And unless you're allergic like Squizgar Squigalf, up next is the cilantro. This is a powerful herb, so start with small amounts. And like everything else, give it a rough chop before throwing it in the blender. And do include the stem, as there is a lot of flavor in there. And then because there's not a lot going in already, we'll throw in the garlic at the same time. Give it the old good squash and chop. This is another one of those ingredients that has more of an important use than just flavor, as it does work as a bit of a natural preservative. Side note, Phil hates garlic and will probably exclude this in the future. The hate's probably an overstatement, but he could do without it. Please don't hate him for hating garlic. But what he does hate is vinegar, especially hot sauces that include it as its number one ingredient. So this already ruined hot sauce, which is probably great to other people, is about to get a lot worse for Phil. He might skip the cilantro too. Also, that's just way too much salt. Remember, you can always add a little salt at the table. You don't have to put it in the sauce itself. But a little bit is important to help stabilize it. The recipe we're following says it should make about three bottles of hot sauce. 
And that to follow it properly, we should add this entire bottle of apple cider vinegar. Although aside from Phil for some reason having trouble opening the top, we start to realize that the lackadaisical writing method of the recipe we're following has led to some problems. Such as this isn't enough to make three bottles. In the end, you're going to see that we end up with just barely two. So that's why we divert from the path and don't add the entire bottle of vinegar. But this is how making hot sauce is a lot like making your own beer. You have a lot of customization and options available to you. So get out there and experiment with a few things. And check out in the description below as I've put links to a couple other hot sauce makers that we got inspiration from. And yes, we'll be having a fermented hot sauce video coming soon, hopefully. Soonish. Soon hopefully-ish. There's a lot going on, but once it's out, check the link in the description to find out more. Really, if you're not down in the description, you're missing like half of the episode. We're almost done, so don't forget to give it one last taste to see if you need to change anything before we finish this up. After some deliberation, Phil decides that what this needs is more pineapple and mango. Unfortunately, we only had the one mango, so we're just going to add some more pineapple. In the end, what we needed to do was add less vinegar, less onion, skip the cilantro, and add a bit less salt. And never before has Phil sounded as such a picky eater. Half the time I just see him eating spaghetti sandwiches, which this sauce would be great on. And if we were going to make a fermented hot sauce, this is where we would get it into a fermentation vessel with an airlock and let it sit for about two weeks. But that's not an option because we used more dried peppers than fresh peppers. So we will be boiling and relying on the acidity of this hot sauce to keep it fresh. Although despite all of Phil's complaints, it's probably not going to last very long because he still likes it. The trick will be hiding at least one of the bottles at him so we can see what one will taste like later on after it's aged. But once you've got it good and blended and got it to the consistency you like, now's the time to add a little extra water if you need as we're about to boil it. Although it will alter the flavor somewhat, we will want to do this to help keep it from spoiling prematurely. This will also help thicken up any sauce that may have been too thin, which is what we originally thought with this sauce, but I think we might have boiled it too long. We were going for about 5 to 10 minutes, but the recipe actually says just bring it to a boil and let it cool for 20 minutes after that. I know you're probably sick of hearing people say this, but it's really about just finding out what you like and experimenting with it. There's no one set recipe that is right or wrong. Even a bad hot sauce is good to somebody. And with that, our journey starts to come to an end. If you haven't sanitized your bottles or funnel by now, now's a good time to do it. And if you don't quite know how to pour something into a funnel, you might want to ask for help with the stove. These videos are intended for adults after all. But yeah, just fill them up. If it's a bit thick, you might need to take a little time. And you will want to go to almost near the top because you want to limit the amount of oxygen in there. Especially for its initial aging period. Once these are filled, you will want to let them sit in the fridge for at least two weeks before you dig in. And before you take off, don't forget to click that subscribe button so that you don't miss our next video. Or give a comment below on what your favorite hot sauce recipe is.